From the world of AV programming and control with James King, I'm Steve Greenblatt, and this is Ask the Programmer. Hey, James, it's great to be back with you. Hey, Steve. Uh, as always, it's great talking with you and uh, this weekly podcast. And we, uh, we, we have an interesting one today because I'm sure that most programmers have had this thought before. Um, so you're a programmer, you're successful, you're doing what you do. So how do you advance? Because if you're, as James says, if you're, you know, the programmer on an island, if you're the one man or a woman at an organization, there isn't that much room for you to, to necessarily grow or, or move without leaving a big gaping hole. Um, if you're part of a team, there, that may be a little bit more definitive, but it really isn't re that clear because programmer becoming a programming manager, as we mentioned in a past episode, that, that isn't always the right recipe, especially if you're a really good programmer. It's not, it takes a different skill set and a different quality to be able to manage programmers or even be able to, to teach and groom programmers. You, you have to, you have to really understand that. Um, so James, with that, um, intro, um, what are some things that you think you, you have, um, either thought of, or you think cross other programmers minds in terms of where, where do they go with their career, uh, uh, you know, as an AV programmer? Um, I think this is a, a very good topic here and has crossed my mind many times because I do feel that, um, the path, just as in AV, there is no clear path of how people got into it and really to move around and move up. There's even a cloudier uh, vision for programmers. It's, okay, you're an AV programmer. Well, you might be a level two programmer, but I, I don't hear much of that. It's more of, yeah, I'm a AV programmer and that's it. Um, where if you look at the traditional software developer, you have your junior developer, you have your senior developer. Um, so you kind of have a stepping stone of your career path in programming in a software development. AV, I, I really feel it's, you kind of get shoehorned and block into it because it's like, all right, We'll take James here. He's our AV programmer. Now we don't want to lose him. All right, we got this other installer or lead tech or position, but we don't want to lose our programmer. So we're going to bring someone else into that role um, or a management role because we don't want to lose that boots on the ground. Um, and there's no like, okay, senior programmer, unless you're in a programming house or third party house uh or maybe integrators i'm not sure how they structure their programmers but i feel in higher ed where mostly you're a programmer or you're a designer or you're a person wearing many hats yeah to, to answer your question you know i think there's only a few organizations that have programming teams um, and, and I say a few, I don't mean like three or four. I mean a few and as compared to the number of that don't. <laughs> the, the, you know, many, um, many organizations, they're in the same situation where they have one or two or three maybe programmers. It's hard to have somebody who's managing when you have such a small group. Um, you maybe have somebody who's a lead or you have somebody who's the most qualified and you have somebody who's a junior per se, as you mentioned, but it's, uh, it, it's hard to, to have a, a, a step ladder or a way to progress per se in the, those types of situations. Um, for me, I, you know, what I, what I could share a little bit about is that, um, you know, one thing that programmers can look at is how do I take what I've learned and, and kind of shift laterally per se. So um, where I am, I may be at as far as I can get because the, the, either the organization, 
that I work with only does certain types of systems or the, or the, um, the opportunities that I have are just not challenging anymore. So, so can I shift to another situation where I can feel like I can grow or, or get different type of experience? Um, all those things I think can be very, very valuable. They may not be a different uh, type of uh, a, a, a role or a title, but, they, but, but for a career, they can be very valuable uh, from, uh, from, from, from a growth perspective. Uh, that, that's one thing that I, I would certainly add for, you know, as far as suggestions, but it, it's, there, there's definitely, it, it's definitely something to, to think about because what I've also found, especially in situation that I'm in is that not all skills translate to every environment. So somebody who's very successful in one, one role, they may be the top of their organization. They may end up becoming um, a junior person, even at a different situation. It, it all depends on, on, on where, uh, what, what, what that, what the requirements of that role are and how your scale, skills translate. It's, it's a tough thing for some people to realize. Yes. It's very hard, um, to realize that. And not everyone think about that. Like they see a positioning and they don't realize you may have to start over, you know, um, start from the ground up. And actually I feel that is a, something that the younger generation doesn't even truly understand. Cause I don't know how many times I've heard, uh, students go, well, I'm not taking a job unless it's offering hundred K because they're used to their parents making about that much, but they don't realize their parents put 20 years into the business to get there. They didn't start out at that starting salary and maybe you're lucky. Maybe you have the skills to get there, but not everyone does. And you have to find the path that's right for you. Um, and your end goal, goal, what you're trying to achieve. And I think now with AV, utilizing and leveraging more common programming language, I think there is more opportunity for AV programmers to grow. And maybe not in AV, but in IT, as I say, AV is IT, but getting into that true software development and even cloud infrastructure I, I definitely think that could be a good stepping stone now that we're leveraging these technology in AV. I, I was going to talk a little bit about uh, pay scale and so forth. And so I'm glad you brought it up because I don't want to get into to particular numbers, but, mm -hmm. but some people get locked into a role just because they're getting paid so much, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're secure or that they're fulfilled. You know, it, it's, it's good to have um, a good salary and, and some people that might be their, their, their most important um, perk of working or benefit, but the studies show that it usually isn't the number one there, you know, job satisfaction and, and other benefits are uh, outweigh just, uh, just salary. Uh, but, but to your point, I think it, I would very much agree, and I admire people who are willing to take a step back to to take two or three steps forward. And it's and it's very very tricky, and especially if you feel like you've um, you know that you can make more, but uh, you you are willing to go to another type of a, a a role or an organization where you have to start from the bottom and prove yourself again, knowing that the potential is so much higher. It, not everybody's willing to do that. Yes, it's hard too, because um, no one wants, it, it's scary out there to think about a new job or new role, um, especially if you have a family and you're trying to raise. Um, so all that stuff is weighing on your mind. And like you said, it, money is not a motivator unless the person needs money but once their that basic need is met they have other needs that they need like job 
gentrification and stuff like that. And that, I don't know, I'm trying where I'm going with this, but yeah, it's really a, um, a motivator to try to find what path works for you. And you might have to start over. I mean, for me is I took a long look at what I wanted to do and I truly feel like I want to get into a management position, but my path I felt at that time wasn't getting me there. So I'm actually now working on my master's because that is something I feel is going to benefit me in my career and get to my end goal. Now, maybe I don't, maybe I do, but it's not because I'm missing that key element. Um, same thing with programming. If you want to get into a true software development, get onto those courses that teach you the different languages. So you, you got to put the work in yourself, I think, because just like in the real world, a door's not going to open and be like, Hey, Steve, come in here. We're going to make you a Python programmer. Now you kind of got to bust that door down yourself. I, I uh, very much agree that somebody who's self-driven and who has the credentials and, but, and, and knowing where you're headed is key just, but just to learn stuff for the sake of learning doesn't always provide that same outcome or, or benefit. What, what I'll add to, and not everybody thinks about it from this perspective, but as a business owner, I have to, is that you have to think about what is your value to the organization. So can you, if you can bring more value to the organization, if you can address a need for an organization, you're going to get a lot further. Um, and sometimes doing that doesn't necessarily, you know, maybe takes you out of your, your the, the path that you wanted to go in, uh, but it also opens the door to a new path. Um, but, but being able to provide value and help an organization grow or make money or satisfy uh, an area of weakness. Those, those are really uh, a, a great formula for advancement. I agree. Um, that kind of reminds me, taking this out of a, even a working environment and just as a team environment, um, there is a saying that goes around that says, don't try to be the best on the team try to be the best for the team doing what the team needs or the business need your work needs um is really what needs to be done like you said sometimes you gotta take a step up or a side step and try new adventures may not be a right fit but don't be afraid and don't sit there like well i'm better than this i'm gonna all right. Oh, I don't do that. That's not my job description. Sometimes you got to get your hands dirty um, to move, get clean hands and stuff. So definitely uh, good points there. So, so I think a good sum, summary for that, that I could think of, you know, <laughs> as we wrap up is that um, flexibility, it, you know, comes to mind um, value and, and then, then also being able to, uh, contribute in a way that is going to be meaningful. Uh, and, and by doing those things, likely you'll be able to write your own ticket. You know, you just have to help, you know, you, if you help the company succeed, they'll help you succeed. Cause I think maybe a good way of, of also thinking about it kind of goes back to your, your, you know, the, the team saying, yeah. it's not how, how much you go, are going to win. It's how it's making, helping the team win. Cause if, if, if you score five goals and the, yourself and the, the other team scores six, you still didn't win. Yep. I, I use this example um, with the team I coach. Uh, it was just the recent World Cup, uh, the men's one, uh, Costa Rica, who is not a powerhouse. They don't have these stars on their team like Messi and Ronaldo, but there were a very good team they um they actually made it to the final world cup they lost rightful so they uh lost to a good team who had the name players as well but the key element that i take from it is 
they did they had one player who was a very good player uh he was not a Messi or Ronaldo but it was named out there that he was a good player and his coach looked at him and goes I need you to be my bench player I need you to come out be the player off the bench and the guy respond I'm not a bench player the coach goes go home sent him home he didn't get to play in the world cup uh game because he saw he was better than what the team needed hmm. wow that's a it's a really, really good and powerful story actually yeah. probably one that everyone should think think that through a little bit uh, but hopefully we've been able to provide even though we we've we've taken a little bit of a detour from talking about programming uh in general or pro or or the nuts and bolts of programming. Hopefully we've provided some just, just uh, basic uh, good old fashioned insight and, and uh, advice to help uh, everyone think a little bit about how they might be able to advance. And, and, uh, you know, w- with regard to, to, to AV programmers, at least sometimes that, that path isn't very clear. So uh, that was our intention for today. Um, James, why don't you share um, either any final uh, thoughts or how everyone can reach you and uh, provide feedback? Um, I don't have any closing thoughts. I think we kind of wrapped up pretty well there. Uh, but as always, you can reach me at uh, Twitter, AV underscore James King on LinkedIn, this weekly podcast at love to hear from our listeners uh it's always great when we get comments and i also write the it and av weekly uh or monthly sorry monthly uh column for the higher ed digital magazine uh for me uh you can find me simply at steve greenblatt on social media uh linkedin and twitter or where i spend most of my time on social media when i have the time to do so but if you need any um, thoughts or have any uh, questions about this i'd be glad to be able to share um, any perspectives or any insight um you know, so please reach out um be, be more than happy to talk about it uh, i've came from a programming background and moved on to, to running a business so my career path is a little bit different than some others but um I, I think that this is an interesting conversation to have. Um, and please check us out on many platforms. If you don't already know, we're on YouTube, we're on uh, Apple Podcasts and Google Podcasts and try to be as available as possible or you can reach out to us directly. Uh, but thanks for listening or watching. And this has been Ask the Programmer.